AWS launched today Kiro, an agentic IDE, which is a competitor to Cloud Code. But is it worth using it? Let's take a look together and see what's in. Before we dive into the application itself, let's take a quick look at the website. You can get some information here about Kiro and also the download for your system. It has a lot of features you already know from Cloud Code, maybe if you use it, but it's a very clean interface as far as I saw. As I said, it's just launched. I didn't test much, but it looks very promising and you can use it nearly for free or with high quotas at the moment to test it out. For the pricing, it's very comparable to other solutions in this field like Cursor, Cloud Code or Windsurf with the $19 plan. So I think that's okay. And you also can get the $39 per user for the pro version, which would be much cheaper as the max plan for Cloud Code, for example, with $100 or $200. But I'm not sure what you can get here with the pro plan. So as we can see here, it's 3K iterations per month, for example. But uh, I'm also not sure which models you can use. At the moment, I just see Cloud Sonnet 4 and Cloud Sonnet 3.7. So this is the interface of Kiro. It's very clean. You have some areas here on the left with specs, agent hooks, agent steering, and MCP servers to configure. At the right side, we can see the, the chat where you can decide either to wipe code for rapid explanation and testing. And you can do a planning first, as we know from Cloud code, where you can switch with shift tab to the plan mode. What we want to do now here is to start with the agent steering, which will generate documentation about the project. So it's comparable with the slash init command at Cloud code. So let's do this and see what we get. As you can see, it's now working here in the chat, reading all the project files and hopefully get a good summary of the project. We can go on the left side here to the Explorer. And we already see it created this folder here, dot hero, where it stores all its stuff. If you open it, we can see the settings and already the steering folder with some documents. It created a product.md listing all product relevant informations. And it created a tech.md with all uh, technical information about the project, how to start it, start commands, how to develop and so on. So it's splitting it instead of putting it all in one file as Cloud Code does. Okay, it's done in creating all the files. As we can see here, it creates the product, the tech, and the structure.md. We already looked at two of the, these, and the last one is the structure with the complete structure of the project. The next thing we can do is go back to the Kiro extension, and then we can go to specs and create a new feature. So we can enter here our requirements now. So let's do, as we are in the local AI package, let's create a feature for this one. And let's say we want to implement a portainer integration to manage our Docker stack. Enter, and let's see what we get with this. What I already can say, I, I like the, the UI here with these areas for specs, agent hooks, steering, and MCB servers. It looks very clean. While this is running, we can take a look here at the bottom right, where you can choose the models. And as I already said, at the moment, we can see two models, just two models, Sonnet 4 and Sonnet 3.7. I'm not sure if they will also allow Opus in the future or other models, but yeah, we will see. Other than that, you have the, the standard options here to to reference files, folders, and so on, as you already know from other IDEs, and you can attach images as well. As we can see, it's now finished with the specs, and we got the Portainer integration file. So we can now review this file, and we got also here the requirements, design. Oh, we got the requirements, and it will then create the design, as it looks like. So. Looks okay. Then let's. Then we can tell it, yes, looks good. And it will go over to the design, I guess. 
I think we could also click here on the sign and then, yeah, we can could click here on this text to generate it. There's also a refine button, so you could reiterate over the requirements and make it better. It's still working, but we already can see it filled out the design file here with a lot, lot of stuff. It has a testing strategy, strategy, error handling, data models, profile support, get integration, very important. So this looks very promising in my view. And now we can go over to the task list, so the implementation plan. So this time we want to click here and see if it works. So click on the text, yes. And it starts generating the task list. Looks like we can create manually tasks here as well with the help of the AI. I think we could in parallel also test out the hooks here. So let's create a new hook. Click the plus icon and then we get this view and then we can just try this at a base at basic test if not already created for each component. So we get a hook which will create tests. So what it does is listen to file changes and then automatically trigger Kiro to take follow-up actions. That's also possible in Cloud Code. I didn't show this yet, but I can show this in the future if you want. So let's fire this up. And we got a new tab here. And it's doing the task in parallel. So creating our task list for the implementation and creating the hook as well. Looks like the task list is done. So let's take a quick look. Okay, we could click here on the task then to execute them. If we hover here, you can see. Okay, it has here the references to the requirements from the design, I guess. Yeah, let's execute one task. Here the first one. I click it. And as we can see, it's now starting to implement it. Not sure if we can start multiple tasks, but let's try this out. Ah, then it queues, queues the tasks. So we could run all one after the other. You can click here on changes to see file changes, but nothing yet. But in the meantime, we can go back to our agent hook. I think that's finished now. Yeah, it created the hook. It has a title, description. Ah, it has eventing, so we can listen to file created, file saved, deleted, or a manual trigger here as well. Okay, we can also sp specify specific paths to watch, so not the entire project, or just specific files, for example. And then we got the example prompt, or the instruction prompt, sorry we could modify manually as well. Let's create another simpler hook to test uh, it out. So if a new file is created, create a second file with the same name plus underscore changed. This is a pretty easy use case, but we can see if it really triggers the hook. Then we can, as soon as this is ready, we can, we can create a file manually and see if it works. I just clicked here on open task list and as we can see, it shows here the current task and tasks in queue. So looks like it has to do the task here first before it does the hook we want to create. Maybe let's stop this. Yeah. All tasks and now it creates the hook. So we can test this out quickly. Okay, it created the new hook, new file companion. Let's check the prompt. Yeah, it's the post fix changed. Okay, perfect. Let's go to the project and add a new file here. My test file dot md. And let's see if it creates the changed file. And when? How long does it take? I don't know. Let's refresh. Nothing there yet. Let's go back to Kiro. Ah, the trigger is wrong. So it has 
you said created on created file, but it chose the event. It chose the event file saved. But yeah, we can change this to file created manually and test it out again. Let's create another file. Test file thomas.md. And let's see, refresh. Oh, we don't have to refresh manually. And as you can see, it's already done. And it created the changed file. Yeah, pretty cool. I just saw we can also ask Kiro here within the chat. So if you go to a file, let's go to start services, for example, maybe mark something, press Control I, and then we can ask Kiro about the lines we selected or the file we are in. What's this? Okay, in Edston. It adds a comment here. Okay, we don't want this here, but also a cool feature. Okay, let's close all tabs here. We don't want to save because just a demonstration and we can take a quick look, but that's pretty default. We can have a user and a workspace configuration for MCP servers. There's also a default MCP server, as it looks like for fetching stuff. But you could also copy your MCP servers from Cloud directly here. It's the same JSON structure. Okay, let's open a new session here with the plus icon top right. And we want to test out the wipe coding here as well. So let's give it a prompt. Implement engines instead of caddy as reverse proxy. And let's see what it does. Okay, it begins with checking all the files. It was also reading our steering documents we created in the beginning. And I guess it will directly start yeah, implementing. It's now creating the engines configuration. So exactly what we expect from wipe coding. So we don't do a big plan, task, design as we did before for our portainer feature. So we did a pretty simple prompt and it directly starts implementing. So it's good for rapid prototyping maybe, but you shouldn't expect that good results. Because as you know, context is important and there are recently a lot of videos about context engineering and this has a reason because you get way better result if you do proper context and planning. Okay, I don't think we need to wait for this. I showed the main features of Kiro, what I saw so far and it looks pretty interesting and definitely something we should keep an eye on it and see how it evolves in the future. But yeah, check it out yourself and let me know in the comments what you think. Is it a cloud code killer or do we stay with cloud code or do you prefer any other IDE? Let me know in the comments and I hope to see you in the next one. Have a nice one. Bye.